What's going on, y'all? My name is Dexter. This is Vice News. This is also Noisy. Uh, but maybe more importantly, this is Receiver. And this is the 10th installment. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, but we're we're here, we're here, and um, and I say bad thing because it's definitely strange situation that we're in. Um, but you know we're trying to make the best of it. So to give you some background, again, this is the tenth installment. Um, I'm about to introduce George Ann Muldrow in just a moment, um, who will be our tenth guest. But really, where this comes from is, you know, really when COVID nineteen, really when this pandemic started making its its presence felt. Um, it definitely was making its presence felt really early on in really all aspects of life. Basically, no matter what, every aspect of your life was getting touched. But one thing that we felt really important is, you know, it's also affecting the way that we communicate with each other, the way that we express ourselves. And a, a big part of our society, a big part of our culture is is the artists. And, and you know, often we look to them for expression we look to them not only for comfort but for leadership and um you know help us make sense of what's going on right now so again this is the 10th episode uh, a lot has happened since the first um but we're, we're still here we're still doing it and so this is a you know this is a series receiver where we tap in with artists who are out there doing interesting things and just see how they're doing so Again, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, feel free to drop in some comments, some questions, really. Uh, YouTube, same thing. Uh, we'll definitely get some of those. It's a real big, open, free chat. We got some music coming also, uh, but really this is all about the conversation. Um, so I'll stop talking and uh, we'll hear from who we're here to hear from, uh, Georgia and Mojo. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me here. I appreciate this. This is... Uh... It's been like how you said it's a really interesting time, and um, as a musician, it's been a definitely uh, an adventure trying to figure out how to. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So I appreciate this outlet because it presented like a challenge I hadn't done before. So, you know. I hope to, um, you know, in the future, keep on, you know, running into people like you guys to help me stay creative. I mean, I, I feel like, well, thank you, but I mean, I feel like existing now is a challenge we haven't done before. <laughs> Creatively, yeah. Yeah. everything, everything. So let me let me start out with, with the obvious. Um, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Hey, I'm doing, you know, <laughs> do a lot, you know, you know, shoot, you know, I'm saying, you know, I mean, you know, I got, I got a plan, you know, I got plans too, man. Okay. You know? All right. We're, <laughs> we're out here with the plans. You know, I, I, I am out here with the leafy greens. Your girl got stuck in the <laughs> yeah. Living in Vegas, man. Can't play around. Yo, but, uh, okay. Hold on. Re rewind that for me. But, because... you know, you're, 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 it, man, I have I, you know before we go any further, like that is one that's that's incredible. Yo, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm doing my best. There's yeah. you know there um, it's been trial and error, definitely. Not every for every for every good looking green plant in there, <laughs> there's something I put off to the side that is not. I got I got some sunflowers <laughs> that are not looking sunny at all over on the side that I can hide because I'm ashamed of them. So let let the record show. <laughs> I'm not professing to be anything out here. But but hold on. You're you're in Vegas. See, I I I think of you as, as being LA, you know, to the fullest. So what what what's got you out in LA right well, now? Yes, I'm, I'm definitely from LA. I am from LA. You know, um I was born and raised there and I spent a lot of time like my formulative years, you know, um soaking in various generations of music from mm. that part of the world and and you know consequently i try to take a little piece of it everywhere i go you know i don't think uh i love where i live in vegas it's, it's like my um i get a chance to like really really get into my hermit you know 
It's my favorite hobby is being a hermit. And picked a good um, time. I'm a functional hermit. It's really fun. Like, <laughs> so, but when I when I talk when I'm usually engaging with people, I've mm. I've you know Deli and I have driven for four hours, and we're in LA, so it's, it's interesting now that you know things are really on lock. Yeah, that, that's even more true. But um, yeah, I mean LA means so much to me. You know, it's especially like with the project I'll be sharing with you guys today um, with, you know, um, improvised music, black improvised music, also known as jazz, also known as black American music, also known as the sauce, you know, or the source, you know, of, of my sound. It really is, it's, it's mm. the source of my sound is jazz. So um, where I heard it was in, you know, in Lamar Park and in, in, in our home, you know? Mm. So, yeah, you know, this is my way of getting the music out. And so I have, um, there's a name that I use to describe, yeah. I'm gonna be in my feelings on a record. <laughs> and it's called Gioti, and it was given okay. to me um, by, by Swamini Turinanda, or more widely known as Alice Coachman, um, under the um, advice of my aunt Rada Vadafasina. And yeah, so that's that's the deal. I've been Jyoti um, since the second day I met Dudley. Dudley Perkins. Wow. Yeah. And we've been get, we've been together for a little over fifteen years, and I've been I mean and I really literally have been a hermit for like that same amount of time. <laughs> so I think you know there's something to it. I don't know, but it when together, you know, but... it's, 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 it's my other name. I mean, there's a community of people that refer to me as Jyoti primarily. You know, really? So it really, they don't. They don't call you yeah. Georgia when they when they meet you. They they yeah. hey, what's up, OT? Really? Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And you know, and I, I definitely want to want to pause real quick. So in case you weren't, you know, in case this is somehow new to you, uh, we got you, uh, Dudley, also known as the Claim, also known as yeah. a range of other names. Uh, you know that that you yeah. can. Get um, but again, you're, you know, we're, we're talking with Georgia Ann Mojo, best known as Georgia Ann Mojo, depends on who you're talking yeah. to, also known as Joe T, as we just elaborated. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to jump in on YouTube, throw them in there on Facebook, throw them in there. We'll definitely get to it. But before, because I want to hear, I want to hear, um, I know, I know you've got a couple tracks to share with us, but I, I have one question that I wanted to, that kind of hit me when I was, when I was listening to this is, so Jyoti is this name that was given to you by Alice Coltrane, right? And I can only imagine that when you're when you're given a name by somebody that is, you know, such a giant in in a lot of realms, right? A lot music of realms. being one, music only being one, right? When you're given a name by somebody that stature, I can only imagine that there's there's a pressure to live up to that. But now you've been living in that name for some years now, at what point does that name start to feel like, oh, this actually is me? Oh man, I think, I think that is, is, is something, it's like a, you know, the nesting doll? The yeah. name is like a nesting, it's more like that. It's like, mm -hmm. it opens up to me. I understand what, like, like, oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's different, you know, it means divine light, but it also means celestial flame, you know? So it's like, you know, there's a fire in me. Sometimes it frustrates me, you know? And I wonder, you know, is there too much dip on my chip? You know, <laughs> you feel me? But it's really that's just the way I was made, you know. It encourages me to to 
to know that a lot of the things that uh you know the you know the parts of you that you feel are awkward or irregular those really be the parts of you. no quiet i can't uh-uh i'm live right now bubba okay you can come get a hug it's fine my son is in the room you come give me a hug bro come give me a hug I love you. what's up how you doing you got I love you. Can I say how much I love that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I just call you how much I love that? He's at the door like, I know. <laughs> Oh my, God. Yeah. oh my God. But what, when was it? What was, do you, do you remember a specific point where you felt like, oh no, I, I am Jyoti. Jyoti is me. This is me. This isn't a name somebody gave me. This is me. You know, it's, it's interesting. It's like, I think this was the year. Really? To be real. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is the year because up to this point, I mean, up to February, I mean, my last gig was in February mm-hmm. on, on Leap Day. And, you know, just trying to figure out, like, I've been always like been on this quest to figure out what I want to do with the live performance. You know, it's always been an adventure. I never wanted to be like, artist where it's like you can be rest assured that you're just going to hear the cd i'm going to be the robot that plays the, the song you've already heard a million times just the same one that is not mm-hmm. how you down. i'm looking for ways to interpret it and flip it on its head how can we make this an interactive situation how can we you know how can we interpret this and make a new song right now i've always been mm-hmm. like interested in that and you know, right now, more than ever, I've been feeling like this leaning, like vocally, like the songs I was writing was just off the grid, you know what I mean? And I wasn't like planning on looking much. I just like, you know, just really, I wanted to get into some different kind of stuff. And and Jyoti, that whole like realm of, of music that I made, allow for me to do these kind of songs like this, you know? And it's, you know, even though I love the funk, you know, I will always be funky. And there's, there's funk on the record. I mean, you'll always have a little funk, but like, yeah, like yeah. really, it's just when, when I feel the most fragile, when I feel the most like in the wind, when I feel, you know, just, I don't know, like when I'm in my like, it's like inner, like when I'm in my inner peace zone, but I'm like in a place of inquiry about the world, that's music that comes out every time. And that's what has even started any of these records to like come out. So Mm. I'm just happy that there's something that I can like name it, something, you know? Cause you know, how them feelings go, it's like, what do you call them? Oh. Wow! <laughs> like, a, like another another you. It's it's like the it's like the nesting dolls thing you're saying. It's almost like another you within you. Yeah, it's it's the real me. It's like it's because like you know I really admire people like Mr. T. You know, I like Storm from the X Men. You know, I like superheroes. You know, yeah. I really like I don't know like. I don't know, like, I really like to think of myself as a, a sonic superhero sometimes. I like that, you know, save the day, yeah, you know? But Jyoti is more like, you know, whoa, what is this place? What is this world? I just landed here, what is this, you know? Mm. And it's very emotional. I'm more in the dead with these records, you know? So it's like, it's really, uh, is this is 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 it's the deepest part of me music wise 
mm. besides like the G and D records, you know? Like I let that part out on like the G and D records, but like definitely Joti, you can get, you know, the very delicate, you know, piano, like I'm playing piano, acoustic piano, you know what I mean? It's just a mm. different vibe. Well, we should we should let the people hear what, what it is you're talking about. So I understand you got <laughs> yeah. a couple of tracks, a couple of tracks um, with videos actually. And so um, this first one, the walk. Oh, tell 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 me about it. Yeah, yeah. This song really came through. Um, just where how I feel right now. Um, from it's really just about a person who has devoted their life to making their creativity a place of resistance, right? Mm. And so it's like trying to figure out a way how not to burn out when you feel like you've said everything that you could have possibly have said. What else is there to say? What else is there? And then I think also it's me like having this longing. Like I look, like I said, I am a functional hermit. I dig it. I love the place of solitude. But then you see things happening in the world that be like, hey man, you got to engage, man. You know, you got to keep on engaging, keep on finding something to say. But then it's like you just don't. What what is that? What else is there to say? when it's like there's a lot more to do right mm. but what is commu where does communication play you know in the role of doing you know and so it's kind of like that's what it's about it's, it's about me wanting to become elegant you know and you know but 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 the seeing things that are not elegant at all you know, okay, well, let's, seeing, let's hear you know, it. <laughs> hurt and, you know, people getting beat up and, you know, yeah. and all of us getting told that we're just it because we just stand out the way we do. Mm -hmm. you know? well, let's let's definitely dig into it. Uh, let's hear it and we'll come back and talk to it. So, again, if you're just jumping in right now, Georgia Ann Muldrow, also known as a special on this project, Jyoti. And uh, let's let's give a listen. Shut up. 
So we just heard this walk uh, once again by Jyoti, also known as Georgia and Muldro. And if you're just joining us right now, welcome to the chat. Uh, where were you? Uh, but yeah, this again is receiver. And if you have any questions, anything you want us to get into the chat, it's really is kind of free for all. We're kind of just getting into it, getting into everything really. Uh, feel free if you're watching on YouTube, uh, throwing some questions on Facebook, throwing some questions, what have you. So he, here's something that, I mean, we, we you were talking about what this means, right, uh, Georgia? And one thing that that hit me is again, like I said, this is this is the tenth episode that I've done. This is the tenth conversation I've had remotely with an artist. And one thing that almost every single artist that I've talked to has said was, "Hey, look, I recorded something months ago, and all of a sudden, right now, it feels relevant. It feels different. It, it hits different." I didn't expect it to be this relevant. Mm -hmm. Yours is a little bit different though. I feel like I feel like you made, you know, because a lot of people say, oh yeah, this this album or this this single, this track right now feels so relevant right now at this time. I feel like you made the coronavirus slash protest record last year. I feel like that was a G and D record. You know what I mean? Yeah. So much of that. It was yeah. like you were ahead. You know what I mean? It was it was <laughs> that record. Yeah. You're already talking about stuff. I mean, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about protect yourself. Yes. Oh my God. I'm thinking yeah. about protect yourself. Yeah. What is it? Um strive for inner peace so that we could breathe. Mm -hmm. Strive for inner mm -hmm. peace so we can breathe. And it's mm -hmm. already, it's taking, it's interpolating the I can't breathe into something absolutely beyond that yeah. yeah yeah i mean you know i mean especially that song i mean i think with with you know right the poster right over the, oh poster right over there <laughs> but but right. um you know, the gmd record it hit so deep i mean we really when i tell you that those songs completed themselves, you know? I mean, I don't think that we've had a process that easy to the point when we finished that record, we was up there trying to find something wrong with the record. Because it was done so fast. It was, it, it, and then it was like, it was like, there was one night, it was like, well, I don't think I wrote enough. Well, I don't think I wrote enough. I don't think you wrote enough. I don't think you wrote enough. <laughs> and then we both were like, Right, and then I go upstairs and put in my earphones. Little I know, Dudley, he's listening to the record again. That just this one last listen, and we and then the next morning we're like, we was tripping. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it was like I feel like something was coming through both of us, and mm. like something was coming through, man. You know and. I don't know, like for me, I think the one that, that does it for me is like the, the post-apocalyptic love one. Yes. You know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, 
I was gonna go. I was gonna go right there and to and to to bring everybody up to speed in case you hadn't heard this one. G and D is you and your husband also Dudley. So Georgia, Dudley, and and it's you know the it's kind of the the Voltron record, right? Where both of y'all came together and. <laughs> Yes. Not that y'all yes. don't do that anyway, but officially on the name, y'all did that. But I mean, who knew? Who could have? Who could have told you last year this time that even? And I'm I'm not I'm not saying obviously in, in the real sense, but you know it's people out now that are using, in a fairly jokey way, but also kind of serious, using the phrase post-apocalyptic, and you have a song oh, yeah. on. Last year's record called Post Apocalyptic Post Apocalyptic <laughs> Love. Yeah, it would be a year early. Uh, you know, it, it's been happening so long that it's mm. like now we just kind of like it's just something that I've learned to embrace, you know, and to cherish that maybe perhaps we are an undercurrent of something bigger, you know? Because for me, it's like, you know, in my functional professional hermit, hermit, you know, life, you know, I wouldn't dare want to be on the, you know, in the middle of all that, Ew, that's too much. But you know, but I, I'd love to be on the bleeding edge of something, you know? So I know I, like, I know that we could be doing our part, but then I can still chill, you know? <laughs> Yo, I mean that that is sort of the wild thing about when I listened to last year's record, right? Which last year's record mm -hmm. for me really feels like something that is written. You know, when you have artists right now who are feeling like I gotta make something that speaks to the moment. I gotta make something that speaks to the moment. Where some artists feel that pressure, some artists maybe necessarily don't. Yes. Which I, I think yes. both are there. But there are a lot of artists who are saying, okay. I need to write something about feeling isolated. I need to write something about these protests. I feel like that record last year, which you did, was the record for that moment. I feel like mm -hmm. this walk is the, I've been protesting for five weeks record. It's the after, it's the, okay, we've been doing this for a long time. And yeah. now what? Now what do yeah. I say? Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. You know, it's exactly it, man. I mean, like, I'm a child of protest. Like, my mom's an activist, man. You better believe, man. She was dragging me out to whatever, you know what I mean? And then I would drag myself out to whatever, you know, police brutality, man. You know, mm. the, the military, you know, economic complex, man, where people just start wars just for the money. You know, it ain't even no beef. It ain't even no nothing that's at stake. It's just, just, you know, all those different things, man. Just been all types of stuff. Like, I remember, like, rapping about Afghanistan before people were talking about it, you know, because there was covert war, the covert war is happening anyway. You know what I'm saying? It's just so, I think that that's where it's coming. It's coming from years and decades, you know, of being program to resist by my parents you know so i have that program in me but then it's like what do you do with all that knowing that you're though you are one of many right though numbers create strength there is still you that you have to deal with mm -hmm. there's still the ones of your own you know unifying the truth of who you are and, and come to understand what your role is in the midst of insanity. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's where it's at. Like, I, I know that's really how I feel. Like that song is like, that's, that's kind of like the first, like people, like I'm giving people a chance to really know me, you know, on that song, you mm -hmm. know? Cause I usually, and like very much like a cheerleader for whatever your goals are, like whoever I'm talking to, I'm like, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> and I'm like, 
so wrapped up in that that I don't really talk about like unless like I know you real well, you know what I mean? But this mm -hmm. one is like giving people a chance to know that this life comes with fatigue. Like, you know, it's something that but it's not it's not nothing new, you know what I'm saying? I think about, you know, my mom's generation, man. Like they had to do so much for it. I mean, like, you know, we don't get locked up for wearing our hair like this anymore, you know? So yeah. it's like, it's a real, real thing. It's a real thing. Like, you know what I mean? He's like, we're not getting suspected of, you know, I mean, we getting locked up because we're black, of course, but I, yeah, I really misspoke. But anyway, no, I, I think what, yeah. I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is like us even wearing our hair in this state in the way we're wearing them right now was seen as a political act, you know? Like even just how you're wearing your hair it was mm -hmm. like highly political and highly polarizing. And, and it would bring all types of, you know, activity to you. Whereas mm -hmm. like now it's like, you know, I wonder, I remember being a youth looking at my elders going like, man, why y'all burning out? <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Let's go. And now it's like, now that I, uh, you know, I know spring chicken, you know, I'm turning 37. You feel me? It's like, I'm starting to feel it. You know, mm. I'm starting to feel like, okay, all right. Okay, 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 okay. You know, but then at the same time, I can't shut up. I got to speak on it. I, I love black people too much, you know. But then, but and then I'm not going that. to people get hurt. I just don't want people getting hurt. People getting fucked up. I'm not the kind of person to just be like at the risk of sounding cliche to not say nothing. Mm. I feel like life is way more precious than that, and I and I'll be that. I will be that. I will be that cliche, you know what I mean? Hmm. But then you've also got, then you also have that line in there where it's like you're talking to yourself, where it's that internal yes. voice telling you to shut up. Yes. And you feel that. Yes. Yes. Like I've that like I'm pro I probably did it one time right now. It's like oh we was locked up for our hair. Like no we was locked up definitely because we were black. Hmm. But like. There's so much mental chatter. Like, I think now that I got it out in the song, the problem has lessened because it was like, it seemed like it was a personal growth exercise for me. So it's almost like if I can sing it out and get it out and come to know a feeling by its name, like I'd be able to deal with it better. But before I made that song, it was a mm. big problem, you know? And I just, my mind just racing, 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 you know? And the, and the problem being, you, you're talking about, you're talking about, is this something I can even say? Am I, am I doing it wrong? Am I doing? Yeah. 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 And, and also just like, is this my place to do this? Mm. You know? See, like, am I, I, because. Like, is my passion, like, is, is my passion taking up the space that somebody else really needs to communicate? Like, once I get, like, on one about you, you know what I mean? I just be, like, on one. And it's like, I'm just going. I'm not, I'm on autopilot. I'm not thinking. I'm just, it's my rage is running me, and I don't want to be like that because you're going to burn out. And that's, like, that's why I use the car, you know what I mean? Cause I, cause I want to go somewhere. I had, there's a destination in my heart and mind for inner peace for my people. There's a destination, you know what I mean? But that should be mm. sputtering when I can't communicate right. When I can't even give myself the proper treatment in my own inner mind, in my inner conflict, if I'm oppressing myself, you know? That is that is something that that is something that really comes across in it because I mean I feel like just as somebody who's 
been listening to music for, for the longest. And, and I think for anybody who's listened to you for a long time, you know, what you're saying right now is basically you're giving people a chance to know what kind of inner conflict you have, even as an artist who's been, you know, very outspoken about really all kinds of issues. And it's been, we're talking, you've been in the game for a minute, for years, and you're just now revealing something about yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How does that feel? It's good. It's yeah. good. I mean, I, 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 but there's times where I do talk about stuff. Like, I think every time I do it, I'd be surprised at how other people like it. I'm surprised because mm. it's the last thing I want to share. You know, like Roses was the same thing. Like a, I did a song called Roses and mm -hmm. it was talking about depression and how I use, you know, drawing to, to keep my imagination healthy, basically. And people just love that song, man. You know, to the point where I'm like, oh, I'm singing it all the time, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I mean, yo, I think I think people appreciate knowing that they're not alone. You know what I mean? But yo, speaking yeah. of well, not that I want to shift. I want to shift a little bit because we promised to let people hear some more music. So again, if you're just joining us, um, I'm speaking with Georgia Ann Muldro. Um, I'm Dexter, but you're not here to listen to me. You're here to listen to her. Um, and she has another track uh, to share off the Jody Project. And yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about it. What are we about to listen to right now? Yeah, on this one, I did like a little Soul Train lip sync thing. I'm very proud. <laughs> very, very DIY with the video. I like it. <laughs> yes, I did it myself. But yeah, this song is called Oregon. And I have this little piece of Oregon. And it's like. Okay. You know, quartz, there's tin, aluminum, copper, and bioresin. And I don't know if you can see it, but Level Up Art Movement hooked us up with our own piece of art on that says some other shit, which I think is really cool. Okay, all right. And basically, um, Oregon is like, it's, it's said to be able to diffuse um, low electro um, frequencies, like electronic frequencies that come off of your computer, your TV screen and stuff. Kind of, like it kind of dampens some of the extra energy that's coming off of your electronic equipment or mechanical equipment um, so that it doesn't go through you so much. And I call the song that because I feel like white supremacy is emitting a lot of um, toxicity and maybe I can have a song that helps dampen, you know, I always like to see it's like my in my own little musical environment. I like to experiment with stuff. <laughs> so I want to make a musical piece of Oregon, but then also um it's it's uh considering being here and saying hey you know we're african-american right or i just fuck this i want to go to africa i'm out of here ain't no love here off of something so small so mm. it's like or gone like so i say or not we leaving or not gone so it's like both of the things at the same time. Okay. Okay. That's what you can hear. But you have, and I think the other thing is the song talks about how we treat each other, you know, or just how we are living from day to day, living in the aftershock of, of the, you know, the colonists. Hmm. 
All right. Well, mm-hmm. without too much further ado, uh, let's get into it. So let's hear it. We are back once again uh, with Georgia Ann Muldrow off the Jody Project. We just heard Oregon. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to jump in again uh, on YouTube or on Facebook, whatever you happen to be watching on. And this just occurred to me. I'm, I'm actually thinking about the last video. Um, is that the, the first one? Was that your husband sleeping in the back that we saw? No, that, that, no, that is my big body son. He's God. 11. He's just a... <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, so, this is my, 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 I got a futon back to that, that couch back there. I don't know if you can see yeah. it, but it's a couch, but it's also a futon. And, okay. and uh, we had company, but we just kept the, the bed out. And um, some of y'all, if y'all remember, he used to be, he's just, that's the same one that was here while I'm making the beats, but he's right uh-huh. here in my arms. And stuff. That's him. And I think he mm. just kind of had some nostalgia last night. He's like, can I sleep in here? <laughs> Go ahead on, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> that is too funny. I love it. So you got your son in the background, <laughs> sleeping in the background. <laughs> I'm like, I won't get you down. You know, they're going to be for free. <laughs> you know, definitely have a prop. <laughs> He's a definite prop. Definite prop. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. There, there's so many things I want to ask you. So with with that song right um you know what can i ask you can i ask you a different question actually 
You ever seen Cosmic okay. Slap? Yes, I love that. I love that series. Yo. I remember okay. back in the day, like that. I remember back in the day when it came out. I remember just sitting in front of the TV, like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if, if you're not if anybody who's not familiar, so Cosmic Slab, um, it was it was kind of like, it was, I mean, it was kind of billed as the Black Twilight Zone, right? And I think it came on HBO in '94, '95, yeah. something like that. And, and the host was George Clinton, which is, yeah, I don't know how, I don't know how that happened. Praises be to everybody who made that happen, but it happened. They let that man on TV with his own special. And one of the stories, the first one, is I forget what it's called. It's it's based on a on an actual short story, but basically, aliens come to the Earth and they say, and they come to America for some reason. They come to America, and yeah. that's a point of contact. It's just for whatever reason, the point of contact is the United States. And they say, hey, we'll fix everything on Earth. We'll give you unlimited energy, clean energy. We'll fix all diseases, stop everything. All we ask in return is to give, just give us all of the Black people, all of the Black yeah. people. And we'll take yeah. them away, and then we'll give you everything you've ever wanted. No disease, no, you know, mm. nothing. And the entire story develops with, you know, that there's a black Republican, I think, who's who's trying to figure out how to navigate that. And he kind of switches sides at some point. Um, so that that's the story. And for some reason, I don't know. I figured you'd seen this, but oh, yeah. would you have gotten out of that shit? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Really? You know why? I tell I'll why? tell you why. Mm. Because who they were communicating with and who they was telling, it was like they were communicating with who they thought was who the slave masters were. Mm. Who the dominant energy who the dominant people were all they were they weren't communing with us. They didn't come like, you know. You feel me? It wasn't a wheel and we're like, hey, so I go, you know, it, 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 it wasn't right, a chariot. Right, right. That we, were like, you know, we were waiting for the chariot. You know, you talking to the president. Oh, no, no, not you. No, no, no. You know, it's, you know, it ain't like, like the, what happened before, you know, it was, they, they came to a different location, you know, you know, in the lore from before. Uh -huh. <laughs> You know, they could have been in the mountains and the cliffs looking for the people that's like, you know, prayed up, you know what I'm saying? In tune with nature, like, oh, he's on the natural vibration. Let's speak with you and reveal with you. Uh -huh. No, they were like, they went straight to to W. Talking with, give me all your black people. And, uh, nah, that was Elon Musk. <laughs> I'm not even gonna comment on that. <laughs> I'm not even gonna comment on that. But yo, isn't, isn't that such a wild? It, it's the weirdest. Th there's yes. something about that. It's not like there's anything that is happening that is parallel to that right now. But there's, I feel like it's one of those things where you watch every couple years or so, and you just come back to it, and there's just something yeah. that feels like it resonates and I can't quite put my finger on it. And I don't know yes, why yes. the reason why I'm asking, maybe the reason why I'm asking is because I think there's something about Oregon that reminds me of it. When you're saying, forget it, we're going to go to Africa, forget this. Right. Cause there's a part in that movie where, you know, whether, you know, there's some liberal white dude on the TV saying, listen, we can't allow these aliens to come and take the black people because Look what they've contributed. Look, look, look at this. And then, and then there's kind of this weird reverse psychology going on where it's just, well, what if all the black people want to go? Well, now we can't let them go. It's it's this really it's a strange thing, and it's almost like, all right, we're gonna pack up and leave. Which is why I always find having that conversation with somebody about would you get on that ship be really interesting. Would Would you get on the ship? What would you do? See, now that you put it that way, <laughs> because here, here's the thing is, 
Yeah. You know, I see. I've I've talked to people. It's you know you know the what is it the Mandela effect I think where you remember yeah. things in a different way. I've talked to people yeah. who have said that they remember a different a different ending, right? Where actually the aliens were there to save everybody. Mm. Now, of course, mm. this didn't happen. This isn't true. But for, it's it's yeah. strange that yeah. there are people who who remember it that way. I think it's wishful thinking, obviously. But it's it's just a weird. It's that the space as metaphor. You know, what I mean, the spaceship as metaphor. I think has always been, especially with George. Mm. You know, what I mean, I've, oh, I've, yeah. I mean, that's, that's in your music Absolutely. all over the place. I mean, I'm into it. You know, I, I think I think the part that I think that. I love Cosmic Slop. I love that song because the song itself is talking about the complexity of life. That things mm. aren't just, so, you know, teach you not to paint your brush so broad, right? You got to look at the detail. You got to look at, you know, the humanity. You got to, you know, choose from a humane place. And I feel like that's what made Cosmic Slop so bad. Because it was, they was. That's what exactly what was going on, and I, like, like, you know, I mean, even the song where, where basically, you know, Parliament Funkadelic they're singing, like, you know, I could hear my mother call, right? I hear, I hear my mother call, and it ends mm. the prayer, and the mother is a sex worker that's trying to feed her kids, and praying for forgiveness from God because it's the only way she knew how um, to provide for her children, where, you know, there's such a, you know, on the other side of it, it's just like, oh, you a hog, right? But it's like, no, she's a mom that's trying mm. to build resources in the neighborhood that doesn't have none. And she's finding, she's praying, and she's a spiritual person. She's a religious person. She's a religious mother. So I feel like, like, like the cosmic slap, that song is the perfect title for that show because, like, I feel like when they were like, "Give us your black people," right? I think that I think that was the Easter egg, you know, like get like as as we like if we're something to be given away, mm. you know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's something to be traded for, right? But, but the right. thing, but I think the thing is though was that you know they brought the flying saucers they had to elevate the ship above the the, the sea level for people to kind of grasp how ridiculous and immense you know the middle passage really really has been for us you know I mean, I've, mm. I've seen it like, you know, with like movies, you know, they have to paint us blue and, you know, we have to speak a whole nother, you know, we have to be completely otherworldly to be felt for, you know, in in the eyes of the masses. And I do believe that we, if, if that really did happen, then we would be given up. Yeah, absolutely. Like we mm. wake up in the next morning, just like that show, and they'd be like, damn. Yeah, you know, it, so it is. It is. It's weird. It's it's one of those things that I feel like if we have this conversation in in another year, the interpretation is going to get deeper. It's going to be different. You know, what I mean, it's it it, it, it is one of those, But I I honestly I see that I see that in a lot of your stuff too, and and that's something that reminds me we haven't even talked to. And if people are just joining in, I'm Dexter. This is Receiver. Uh, we're speaking with Georgia Ann Mulder right now about her newest project. And, and speaking of which, um, the the title, Mama, you can bet. Yeah. Tell me about this. What what it, what does that speak to? Oh, just before before I do, Mama, you can bet. The other thing, the, the at the end when I say I want to go back. I'm yeah. literally singing from yeah. time. Like I want a time machine. I don't know if I want a ship, but I really am. I I want a time machine. I'm singing for a time machine. 
that's you know? that's something that hit me too because I, I feel like that when I listen to this when I listen to that I feel like the Africa you're talking about isn't it's a place it's a time yeah it's a, it's it's not even this kind you know I'm talking mm. about like you know rainforest well, we could be just adaptable just really really being in harmony with who we are as as living beings having that mm. a whole nother interfacing with nature a whole nother interface going on being able to be more sensitive to that but with the Kibet, though, that's for my mom and it's literally for the mothers you know of my mom's generation you know the the women who come up through segregation come up through the civil rights movement come through the i'm black and i'm proud black is beautiful when they hear how they want to creating a whole you know organizing you know you know organizing doing all the paperwork administrative work to to fuel you know the black liberation movements and stuff like that and um it's my mother and what it what it's about is saying me seeing her as a grown and me saying hey you you deserve real love in your life as a woman should receive in her life it's I say it's like it's a song that states when the child becomes an adult and can turn to their mother and say, I see you not just as something that's fulfilling my, my needs, not just as my mother. I see you as your own woman. I see you and you deserve true love. Because a lot of us have been raised by single mothers that have been selfless out here and mm. gone above and beyond to give us everything. You know what I'm saying? The best that they can. You know, not every mother has, though. I'm not, I'm going to clarify, you know, but I'm talking about the mothers of the movement that I'm a part of, you know, mm -hmm. and how they have put their love life in the back seat so that they can build things for others, for build community and do this kind of thing. And now I'm just saying, hey man, come on, pretty ladies, y'all but love is waiting for y'all, you know, never too old, you know, in, in a world that really, really has been warped by the white male mind, where the elders are seen as weak, you know, where, where they're seen as, you know, once a woman has birth, you know, when she gives birth, now she has depreciated in value. Mm -hmm. You know, once a woman has a grandchild, you know, now she's less seen, less honored, you know? My thing is like, no, man, if you, if this thing's still taking, you deserve love. Hmm. So when's that That's drop? What it's about. <laughs> when's that drop? August. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right then. Well, yo, we only got a little bit of time left. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to keep you too long because we could, we could keep going. We could keep right. going. Um, but is there anything you want to ask? Man? Is there anything you want to ask? Is there anything specific? Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. You know what? I mean, as th this a recent conversation I had actually the the last episode uh, was with Liv, right? Another LA artist. Um, yeah, and Liv Liv says something really, and uh, as you know, you know, um, you know, we're all part of the same. You know, it's really extended, you know, musical scene, extended cultural scene. You know what I mean? Um, yes. When I was talking to Liv about the the pressure i think that that some listeners some fans right put on artists in a moment like this hey where's your protest song hey where's your whatever song some of the Liv said that i thought was really interesting is that she said that being black and existing is itself activism essentially right i'm paraphrasing here right that yeah that creating yeah. that existing is itself an act of protest so mm. your music you have and so i think for her it's listen i'm creating 
And, and I think people should understand that, right? Now you're somebody who has been creating something that could very well be soundtrack to any protest for years, right? Yeah. You talked about this a little bit, but I mean, how do you start to burn out? Really? Yeah. There's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. You know? You know, you, 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 you're going to be you either, you know, you got to learn how to be solar powered, man. You know, you got to learn how to be hydroponically powered. You got to hydrate. You got to get in the sunshine, man. You know? And take your vitamins and stuff. You know, you can't be so actively pursuing something that takes incremental change in the first place. The things that we really need is gonna happen step by step, you know? And a lot of times we beat ourselves up for not being able to do things um, as quickly as we'd like to see them happen. And, you know, I'm here to tell you, you know, you gotta, you gotta get with the sunshine, man. You gotta get with, with, you got to groove with nature, man, so that you can be refueled, be directed towards what's really real, you know. And, you know, I guess I just, in my music, I just like to scrap. I I just like that. I mean, <laughs> it's something that, you know, for me, it's like being Black, it absolutely, being Black and alive, you know, and self-employed, is definitely active resistance. You know mm. what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you can make it if you're waking up and you're not on nobody else's clock, and but you have a job. That that's definitely radical. You know, but I I think at the same time for me, um, you know, I like to be extreme. I like being extreme. It makes me happy. It gives me a rush of energy. I like being extreme. Like like. I like the prospect of ruining the moment. Yeah. <laughs> You're really living on the edge. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a rush. It's like, yeah. Like, you know, especially if it's like uh, an institution that's like, oh, you can cross over with this one performance. You'll be, you'll be, uh, you're in. I'll be like, I'm out. So I like that. I mean, and I think every show that I've done has been there's there's something that takes over. And it's it's the spirit of my ancestors, man. You know, it's the spirit of my it's in my genetic code, man. Like my you know, my great grandparents, you know, my great great grandparents, you know, they, they man, they was killing clansmen. That's what they did in Arkansas. It was lighting their ass up. I have that in me. That's in my blood, and it boils at that. It boils with that that fire, you know. So, yeah. you no, know, I don't have no problem with that. You know, I think it's just learning how to burn cleanly. You know, as as the jive politicians would say, clean go. You gotta, you know, <laughs> you know so. You know, be wind powered, solar powered, so that you have the energy to keep giving. Because if you're just going off of pure uncut, uh, pure uncut rage without no type of cooling venting system in the body, is very, very unsustainable for the mm. human brain. So you got to really understand how much it how important it is to hydrate your body if this is the life that you're going to lead. You mm -hmm. know, it ain't the life for everyone, but definitely if you're going to be living in the moment, if you're going to be living in confrontation because you enjoy it, you know, which I very much enjoy, you know, I have to be hydrated so I can respond and mm -hmm. feel and listen. And, 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 and definitely, you know, get into the sunshine and absorb some of that coating, you know? 
I got to get coded right, you know, and sometimes you need an update. Take, and your firmware take, update. Take, care yourself, <laughs> take care of yourself in general. Yeah, you have to completely be willing to give yourself or be open to getting a firmware update because you might be screaming and carrying on about something that, you know, could be refined. It could be fine tuned. The nuance mm -hmm. could be helped. You feel me? You know what I mean? Whereas like how we're coming into a time where, you know, the black queer identity is getting um, seen as, you know, that which needs to be protected and loved as well, because mm -hmm. they are black, they are black, you know what I'm saying? They are black, they're blacker than black. So it's like, you know, all the transgender people, you know what I'm saying? Are our people, loving all of all of our people. You know what I mean? That is, I see that coming into play, that becoming louder, like love all of our people. We need to love every single ounce of all of us. Mm. No, we're not too good for some of our own, you know what I'm saying? Unless they feel like they're too good for us. And, and you know, that's fine. That's fine. They can go, go over there, you feel me? But mm. we need as many people as we can to love each other, acknowledge each other, wave to each other, show love show love don't don't bully one another you know and in the places of power that we have we need to show that to others you know what i mean but our black children we not need to stop kicking out our kids because they gay you know we need to stop mm. doing all of that mm. bullying mm. our kids into trying to mold them by bullying them into what we think is upright or whatever like no man raise don't raise assholes you know <laughs> you know what I'm we, saying? Yeah, like, there's no, a lot I mean, of new coming through that I'm so happy to hear. I'm so happy mm -hmm. to hear of, 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 of black folks pulling their kids out of school to be like, you know what? We need to just start over. We need to start over because this ain't education. Mm -hmm. Let us start. Let, we're going to start over. Who are you? What, what, what do you want to do? What you like? We're going to find the education in that. Mm. Okay, like, so that's what I'm saying about the firmware updates is that that's what's going to help those who are in that sh in the struggle, you feel me, to yeah. sustain themselves and to renew themselves and reinvent themselves for uh, an oppressive regime that has no problem slipping and shape-shifting into all types of forms that look like black lives matter mm. don't be don't be so hard-headed thinking that you're really just out there about the cause that you're not willing to learn yeah that. To adapt. And, and you know black lives matter it's like that's good you know you know black is beautiful you know mm. black is beautiful you feel me you know what i'm saying it's like we've been mad like we beautiful how about that let's see the beauty in each other let's start acknowledging each other mm. how about that you no know? and i think we could go on we could just see see like the inner beauty you see your beauty and see all the things that make you look black be the your most valuable and mm. dearest and beautiful the thing that sets you apart you know it sets you apart it makes you just oh top shelf yes we could we could go on we could go on about there's a good i think i feel like there's a good place because you dropped so many ideas there's a good place to kind of wrap things up so i'll, I'll only ask one question finally from you again uh this has been dexter and uh, but more importantly, I've been speaking with uh, Georgia Ann Muldrow, also known as Jyoti. Um, most recent uh, project we've heard two tracks from. Uh, we know there's more coming through, but this new record, right, which comes through, comes out on August 28th. I want to say, Mama, you can bet. Oh, you know. I'm I'm good. Good. What's up? I said I'm glad you know. <laughs> Me and your publicists have to have a conversation about this afterwards. <laughs> but yo, so um, yeah, no, 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 that's 
<laughs> that's you. <laughs> that's We're gonna have a conversation after this. But I, when when people are listening to this, right? Because we kind of talked about, you know, often it does feel like some of this is ahead of the game, right? Um, when people are listening to this, and or I'll even ask it like this overall with this project right that's going to come out next month what is it that you want people to have in mind as they're listening to it whoa that's a good question Like, like I, I'll say like 65% of me at this moment mm. wants to be lazy and say, I don't know. Okay. And then, but then that's lazy. You know what I'm saying? You don't strike me as a lazy person. But that I guess, because when it comes down to what I want somebody to think about what I do, it's like, oh. I never let that guy nothing I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but but I think the best way is just you get a chance to get to know me. I'm giving people a chance to really get to know me. And mm. and all the different parts of the things I like and the way I feel. And like, I don't know. I would. I hope that people listen to the like the sound design elements in there and use it to to think about where they're coming from too. You know. Mm. And I hope yeah. that they enjoy it. I mean, I hope that they enjoy it. I hope that they don't turn it off and be like, "Oh, this was horrible." You know, that's one thing I I know. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. I hope, I hope that, you, know, you know, it happens. So, it happens. But, but yo, I mean, I've, right. I've seen... It depends on the record. I've seen... It depends I've seen, on the record. You know. Sure. I mean, but I, I've seen you I've seen you talk about, I mean, especially in this conversation, right? You've talked about, okay, listen, I mean, here is something that I'm kind of trying to get across, right? An idea that I'm trying to get across. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I want people to understand. Yeah. I mean, is there is there a you talking about sharing something with you about yourself, letting people get to know you. And I think some of the things you're sharing are things that a lot of people, a lot of artists maybe could also, you know, probably use. That's a message they could use. Maybe I'll put it like this. Is, is there a specific story? Maybe we've only got a preview of it so far, but is there an overarching story you're trying to tell people? Yeah. Yeah. I think I know in my life I've used music as my primary mode of expression and it's afforded me a luxury outside of the English language, which has pained me real deeply to, to, to use, to know so intimately. That's actually have been a, a very big pain throughout my childhood life. You know, like, wow, what language do I speak? You know what I mean? What language am I supposed to be saying? So music gave me um, an alternate, a parallel universe of communication, you know? But the, the pitfall that comes with it that I've seen many of my elders and, and people coming up after me too, and my peers, the problem that, that we have sometimes is because we have devoted so much time and space to naming our musical, our feelings with musical notes. Mm. To be able to translate those notes back into words was what I did on this record. And so on the on the pieces like Oregon, um, this walk, Mercedes, you know, our joy, you know, there's certain songs on there 
Mama, you can bet. Certain some of these the songs that I'm really, really singing on there is a personal growth exercise to me use my words instead of just, you know, intonating them, you know. You know what I'm saying? So, really communicate. so I, guess, I guess the story that I'm trying to tell is um opening up. It's the story of opening up, just like how I'm telling my mother, hey, open on up. There's a world waiting for you. I'm also doing the same, you know, and opening up and, and sharing, speak, giving a, a vocal translation to the things I've been doing with this project for a long time, mm -hmm. giving, pe giving people a chance to really get to know me, you know? I'm glad we're getting a chance to know you finally, right? More, know you more. Yeah. <laughs> know yeah. you more. I mean, like, you know, I mean, everybody know what I like. I'm just like, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is this is more. Oh, you know, it's very, it's it's very um. Yeah, it's, it's delicate. It's more mm. delicate. The vocal expression is way more delicate on here, I think. But, but yeah, I, I think the takeaway is just, you know, come hang out with your girl, you know, and, and, and hopefully you'll be under, you'll understand, you know, more about yourself, you know, in the space that's provided to you to just think, hmm. you know, maybe, I don't know. See, the 65% come back up like, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. That that thirty five percent was 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 pretty spot on. I really appreciate that, yo, Jojo. I feel like if you were to humor we we could do this for another five hours. I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to do that to our <laughs> viewers. Everybody who hung out in the chat, I appreciate y'all. Um, but more importantly, um, Georgia, thank you so much for um being so generous with your time and with your music. Um, looking forward to the album once again. Uh, coming out August twenty eighth. And I'm looking forward to that. And thank you once again. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you, Dexter. Appreciate all the awesome questions. And um, yeah, I hope I could answer them well. And Not to right. everybody out there, just uh, just know I appreciate you guys for tuning in and even caring for you know the drop by. Thanks a lot. We we appreciate that. Oh yeah. All right then, y'all. See you next time. Yeah.